Hi, welcome to The Final Stitch. I'm Natalie, and today we're going to talk about adding an easy machine binding to your quilt. Thank you so much for all of your great comments. We've had some questions recently about finishing your quilt by machine. And, um, and so today we're talking about two really easy ways to do that. So Liz, what is our first question? Well, our first question comes from Brenda Bixler. She says, I love your videos, Natalie. They're really helping me. I'd like to see a video on machine binding. I have so much trouble when I machine bind as when I bring it around to the front to sew, I'm way off on the back. So please help. That is a great question, Brenda. So we have, um, one of the really easy things that I love to do is flange binding. Flange binding gives you this little edge so that you can stitch in the ditch and have a really straight line to follow. It looks and that like, helps a lot. Kind it, of like faux piping, right? It's, yep, it's a little bit like faux piping and it can be a really, really great decorative stitch. It does look more complicated, but it actually in a way simplifies the process and makes it so that you have something really pretty when you're done that sounds great. but it's also um it's it's also just so much easier to follow that line okay so how do we do that okay so to make a flange binding you're going to use two pieces and they are going to be different sizes so the part that you want for the piping is the larger size and typically we we cut that at one and three fourths okay and then the part that is going to be the outside of the binding is going to be one and a half Okay. So first we're going to cut our strips and then I will show you how to put those together. Okay. Um, we have this great quilt that we bound or we machine quilted on a previous episode. That's right. So we're kind of following along with our projects here and I have a little bit of it made. So you can see the, um, the little edge once you press it in half. This is just a tiny little piping piece. That's the flange. So I'm gonna cut a couple of pieces so I can show you how that works. And that's why when you fold it, that's why the bigger piece ends up actually being that tiny little piece That's you'll right. See. Okay. Yep. So the large piece is actually the inside of your binding. Got it. Okay, so let me grab a ruler and a rotary cutter. And I've got this folded in half. This is just standard 45 inch wide fabric and uh, Got it nice and well folded Mostly nicely. <laughs> yep, I'm gonna cut a couple of pieces because what you wanna do to create this binding is stitch the little strips together first and then we'll attach those two. Okay. All right, so this one, like I said earlier, is the, uh, the flange. This is the tiny little piping, so it's gotta be bigger. So it is one and three quarters. Okay. And I'll cut two of those. And keep them in a little pile. And then the outside of the binding is one and a half. And I'm gonna use this straight edge over here. It feels kind of foreign to cut something as small as one and a half or one and three quarters because I'm used to using larger pieces for sure. I'm not. <laughs> right, because your binding is usually like two and a half. Two and a half is your typical measurement. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is stitch our, our individual strips together um, by crossing the lines and creating a little mitered piece. Okay. In our construction basics, it's called the plus method or the T cross method, T method something like that so um, you're just putting them together like this and then you're stitching straight across at a 45 degree angle okay usually so from for me it's top left to bottom right so you're making a plus sign or a cross and then mm -hmm. you're stitching and that, the that just implies that these overlap got it if your fabric is completely perfectly trimmed you can put them together right okay. with it but but what I do the reason I do it this way is because then I don't have to cut off my selvages ahead Perfect. of time okay but if your fabrics are already trimmed and square, you can absolutely do it right to the edge. Got it. Same difference. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and join these pieces and I will do the same with the pink. It can help if you have a guide or seam tape or something like that, but you're just doing a, a quarter inch. It's a super short distance and you wanna go from where the fabric crosses at the top to where the fabric crosses down at the bottom. 
So we're going to aim for a nice straight line. Just keeping it lined up. And I'm going to do the same with the pink fabric. I'm just going to leave that one in and add this one in. And I do this when I'm making binding strips. I, I do it like this. I just run them all through and then I take them all out and clip them and trim off the end. And I'll show you that in just a second. As soon as I get this, this fabric stitched. Um, I'm going to slide that right in so that it's right on the needle. All right, so like, yeah, like I said before, I would definitely do all of my strips at once. Okay, so. you're just showing us a couple strips. Yep, just to, just to get you started and, and give you all the basic ideas. Okay. So then I clip these apart. I usually use my scissors to cut these off because then you can just kind of go a quarter of an inch from the seam. All right, so then you get a nice mitered edge or seam that, um, that creates that. And then what you're going to do is stitch all your binding pieces together. And, um, and when you get that done, I would go ahead and press them. And then we'll stitch these two pieces together to create the full set of the flange binding. So when you press that, does it matter which direction it goes? It doesn't okay. because they're, um, they're not going to be up next to other seams. And okay. I'll, uh, I'll show you that in just a second. We're going to offset them just a little bit so they don't actually line up. Okay. That'll reduce bulk just a tiny bit. If they line up though, it's probably fine. Okay. Really like this is just one of those things that looks more complicated, but turns out to be a lifesaver on easiness. Nice. <laughs> All right. So you're going to then set these together, um, right sides facing, and we're going to pull one of them up and one down because what that will do is instead of these then hitting each other, it'll offset them. Uh -huh. See how they're, they're just kind of, yep. um, puts them in a different place. And then when you press them together, it doesn't create like a big bulk in one area. Nice. Okay. So it's just a little bit and it doesn't, doesn't make that big of a difference in the long run because, um, you're going to then have, you'll always have a little bit of extra left over from your binding strips anyways, cause you need that just to be sure that you have enough. Right. All right. So then we're going to join these using a quarter inch seam super standard and you don't have to back stitch or you know because it's all going to go inside of a different seam all right We're almost to the end and you can, you can see that our little pieces are offset still. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to press and I'm, I'm actually going to press to the dark side okay. or the short side, the short in, side. This, in this scenario. So if your dark side were the bigger side, you'd still press to the short side. I would still press to the short side. Okay. Yeah. It makes it a little easier to, um, to get your the flange fold. to fold properly. It may not be a thing, but it, it seemed to be a little bit of a thing for me. So good tip. You never know. Sometimes little things like that can make a big difference. I'm, I'm just laying it back. It's just kind of at a... Mm. 
And to me, the pressing can feel like a longer part, but you save so much time not hand stitching it later that. Yes, that is true. That's a good trade off. Yep. The prep is a little bit longer, but the hand stitching time saved is enormous. Okay, so this binding is actually um, closer to two and three quarters. Okay. And, um, and your standard binding is gonna be two and a half, but I think the reason for that is that you have this seam in the middle, and so it is just a tiny bit bulkier, but the other thing about that that makes it easier is that you then have like this little eighth of an inch that goes over the edge mm. of the seam. So then when you're stitching in that little ditch, the flanged edge is, in, is right over the seam. Nice. Okay. So that helps um, a little bit. All right, so the next step is to fold this in half, and you can just see that beautiful little tiny piped edge popping right up as, as you press along. So I will get this pressed in half. Okay, so I have, um, I have a little bit of binding already prepared to go on the quilt because I, I really didn't want to do the whole thing all at once here on camera because it's kind of time consuming, no big deal. But I do want to show you a little trick because um, some people will want to join that binding together after their two strips are sewn together. Okay. Um, so and you the, can still do so that. So for, for me, yeah, the difference is like, I like to join with the mitered seam each individual strip to itself, super long, and then sew those two strips together. Okay. But if you get to a place where you need to add to your pre-made already made binding like say you you miscalculated and you had a couple strip, so never a strip happened short. ever yeah. never happens to anyone <laughs> you can still join them um, using that same T method so okay. what we're gonna do is cut this straight just cut it cut it right off so that you have a nice clean edge um, and then and I'm gonna cut this other end too because that's gonna make a difference when I go to well yeah, I'm gonna cut it straight. Okay. You don't have to, it could go either way. But since I'm already here. Might as well. I'm, yeah, might as well. All right. So what you're gonna do then, if you are joining to binding that's already made, mm -hmm. and uh, what you're gonna do is the same, same trick you use to join your individual seams. You'll wanna put them together like this and make sure your colors are going ah. the right direction. And then you just flip that and you're gonna at, line them up exactly on the corner. Um, and then one thing you can do is go just a teeny bit, like tiny, tiny bit over because it helps line up. And what you, what you also wanna recognize is that you're gonna have like a, a cross here in the middle. You can kind of feel that. Mm -hmm. okay. You can feel it. Make sure your seams are lined up and you sew straight across, corner to corner, top left, bottom right, 45 degree angle. Okay. Just as if you were putting those individual seams together. It is important to make sure that you come out at the at the corner. Okay. Sometimes when you're joining these, you can be a little off and it's not a big deal. On this one, you wanna be a little more precise. And sometimes I have um, my, my seam. I think everybody has little quirky things. My seam tends to swing a little bit to the right at, as I get to the end. So um, I've, I've just gone back and gone over it and make sure it goes right into the point. Okay. So I'm gonna go nice and slow and then um, make sure I'm still lined up when I get there. You can draw the corner if, or the, I'm sorry, you can draw a line if you would like. That might help keep it straight. And um, if you draw the line, you'd sew right on that line. You would sew right on the line that you drew. Okay. And so then when you pull that out, you can see that it does work to add that together and your, your seam matches up pretty well. Gotcha. So then I'd go ahead and trim this off. And press it flat so that we have a nice, a nice flat. Just, it's just gotta go one way or the other. Okay. And then I'm actually going to go ahead and, and repress that fold so that it stays so you get um, that pretty pe yep, pink. nice and, and folded just the way I want it. Okay, now we have this great big piece of binding and it's time to attach it to the quilt. Woohoo! So the fun part, it's getting better. Okay, so you just pick a side. 
I have no preference. I usually start in the middle. Okay. It makes joining it later easier. Yep. Yeah, because you don't want to be too close to a corner. That's the only thing that I consider. And um, so and typically when you are adding binding, you add it to the front and flip it around the back. But because we're doing a flip to the front, we're going to add this to the back Aha. of the quilt. Okay. So I'm going to flip this over. And the other thing that you want to think about is as you, um, so as you're, you're joining a raw edge, and so it matters which end you start with. Because if I flip this around, I want it to, um, to flip, and I want the flange to show. So if gotcha. I started with the other end, it would be the opposite direction, gotcha. right? Yep. So, okay. So we're going to start, we're going to go flange side up and the binding side down. Perfect. I'm going to give myself about eight inches and leave that just kind of hang in there because I will need that when I go to close the end of my binding okay. later. And then we just stitch a nice quarter of an inch seam all the way around the edge of the quilt. Okay. And so we will probably go ahead and join this and do a little, all right. So just like adding on your standard binding now, keep going right along the edge. As we're getting up to this corner, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to flip and turn that corner because it's, it's pretty easy, but it makes a really beautiful mitered corner. And I just love to remind people how easy it is. So awesome. hang on for one sec and we will get there. So I'm going to stitch all the way down to until I'm a quarter of an inch from the end of this um, of this corner of the quilt. And it's kind of a guessing game. You're not you're not getting out your ruler or anything. OK, um, if you want to, you can at that point turn and do that little diagonal stitch out to the corner. OK, some people love to do that. You don't have to. It's just a personal preference thing. Okay. So then I take the, the thing, I pull it out a little bit, the thing, the quilt, the quilt with the binding that's about to be sewn on. I pull it away a little bit. I flip this back and then pull it straight down. So I do it sideways just because that's what works for me. And all you're doing, I'll show you again. So flip it back. See that nice little diagonal yeah. line? and then pull it straight down. And that, that lines up right with the edge of the quilt. You wanna make sure this fold is straight. Sometimes you'll get it like a little cockeyed and that's gonna make it harder to create a perfect miter. So just keep that straight and you are good to go. Then I turn it, I go all the way back out to the edge. It doesn't have to be um, in any particular place. I'm just, okay. tuck, I'm just tucking the thread in here real quick. And then I continue sewing straight seam quarter of an inch from the edge and my corner is then made and I'll show you that when I get all the way around the other okay. side okay and we're getting close to the end all right so I am within about 12 inches which that's, I mean, that's technically a tiny bit more than you need, but I wanna, I wanna get right to it and show you guys how I finished this. So this binding is technically a little bit wider than you normally use. A lot of people say overlap by two and a half inches. Well, the reason for that is because your binding is two and a half inches wide. Okay, so you would wanna so overlap two and three quarters. This one we wanna overlap by two and three quarters so that we have a good, a good enough place to do our mitered binding. So I'm going to 
trim this a little bit because it's gonna it's a little long for me and the brilliant thing about that is now I have this piece that is exactly as wide as my binding uh -huh. is so what I'm gonna do is lay this piece right against this edge can you show me that up here yep all right so I'm gonna lift my presser foot and take that out um, no big deal okay so you can see here I've got this edge I'm gonna go ahead and make that just a tiny bit straighter. I cut it a little crooked. Okay. Not a huge deal. Cause that's not gonna show once I make my diagonal seam and I'm just using it for measuring. All right. So what I'm gonna do is put this piece right here. Okay. Because it is the width of my binding. Perfect. I'm gonna bring this one straight down and I didn't, uh, and you can see how far that overlaps. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut just a little bit on this side, like not, not a full eighth or quarter of an inch, but just enough to kind of make it a little bit snug. Okay. So cut that straight off and your binding is cut and ready to go. Nice. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold this one back. I'm gonna open this one and I'm gonna bring it up and line them up just like that and stitch corner to corner. So doing that T one more time. Yep. Okay. And it, and it's super easy once you remember how to unfold them. So literally this one goes up like that. And this one opens up this way and sits right snug in that corner. Nice. All right. So that is what I'm going to do. Okay. And I'm just going to point out, it's totally okay to manhandle your quilt to get this to work. Oh, yeah. It doesn't have to be all flat. Yeah, because you're, you're joining it, and there's this little bit of um, this, air, this section that you have to kind of pull together. Yeah. So, uh, you know, whatever you need to do to, to make this piece feel comfortable. Got it. You can have larger space or smaller space, whatever works. Because once we get these ends joined, we're just going to continue to sew that together. All right, and this is the this is the time when you line these right up at the corners instead of overlapping, like okay. we did in the beginning with the salvage ends. Got it. This one you want you want to be pretty lined up because hopefully, if you've done it right, you don't have extra. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to go nice and straight. I'm going to make sure that that point goes right under the needle all right now um because i've done a lot of bindings and i've made a lot of mistakes i always check to make sure that i don't have a twist in it to make sure that it's not too long or too short and so what i do is i pull it out just like this before i trim it and i make sure that either you know Everything is going the right direction. Everything looks as it should. When I get ready to sew this together, I don't have too much binding. And now I feel comfortable trimming off those corners. Uh -huh. Because okay. if you don't, then um, if, you, if you check it first, you can go back and re-sew that seam. No big deal. And if you say, for example, just as a thought, that you've cut your binding too short, you can go back and cut this out and reattach a long piece. You can even seam rip back so that, you know, you can rejoin it and in, in a different place. It's no big deal. Okay. But um, I always check because I've made <laughs> a ton of mistakes and it makes me feel better. So, you know, no big deal. And it turned out nice. Turned out great this time. I've had a ton of practice, so <laughs> trust me, I didn't get it perfectly the first time I did it. Okay. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and trim this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start back. I overlap by like, I don't know, half an inch. Okay. You can do a start and uh, back stitch if you want, start and stop stitch, you know. All the really technical terms.
and as I get to the other um, seam, I go ahead and, and back stitch as well, just because I don't want it to come off. All right, so now our binding is completely stitched onto the back and we are ready to flip it around to the front and make that flange binding shine. Pretty. It's gonna be amazing. So what I'm gonna do first, um, one of the things that helps with machine binding is pressing. Okay. So I'm gonna go to the iron and I'm gonna press this forward because that makes it nice and um, it, it makes it so you don't have to pull as hard when you're on the other side. Okay. All right. So that's part of the answer to Brenda's so, question. A quick tip. Yes. I'm going to okay. press it out because that, that just makes sure that it's, uh, it puts it in the right place. Got it. I don't, I don't know. All right. So this just takes a second. I'm going to move that because it's on my ironing mat. I don't do too much in the corners. You can, you can kind of get right up against it, but it doesn't need to press in any direction. And you know when you're back to the beginning because it's, <laughs> it's nice facing the right direction. It's doing what it's supposed to do. All right, so I have one more hot tip for you. Okay. When you're ready to flip it to the front, um, a lot of people say they have a, they have a difficult time keeping it lined up on the seam. And yeah. one of the things that I do is I run a bead of apple glue along <gasps> the seam edge and that keeps it completely in place. Sneaky. And, um, just like we did just a minute ago with the iron, I'm going to press it down and that instantly dries it and keeps it like totally in place. And then apple glue is great because it, it doesn't come up your needle and it washes right out when you wash your quilt. So awesome. not a big deal. You're not going to get like a stiff binding. It won't be hard. Okay. So I have a, just a little, little apple glue here, and all I'm going to do is put it, I'm going to put it right up here so you can see, just along this seam line, just like that. It doesn't have to be straight. Nobody's going to see it. And then I'm going to pull this down. Whoops, there's a little string. Tuck your strings in. And I'm going to put, put it so that the flange um, kind of hits right about the seam. Okay. And then I'm going to hit that with the iron. I'll go all the way around the edge of the quilt. And... Uh, it's gonna stick. It already sticks. See that? Yeah. <laughs> Even without the iron, it's sticking in place. So, and this is gonna make stitching it down from the top so easy. I okay. promise. You're gonna love it. <laughs> You'll be like, apple glue, where have you been all my life? <laughs> <laughs> it's a very good tip. Super easy. All right. Okay. Oops. Got it on my thumb now. It's pretty awesome. All right, so I'm just gonna keep uh, gluing and pressing all the way around the quilt. Whoops. And it's okay to get it on your fingers. It wipes right off. <laughs> if you get it somewhere else on the quilt, it won't show. It dries clear. Washes and out. it totally washes out. Yep, 100%. Oops, let me move that. I just about kicked it over. All right, so I'm gonna bring this corner up here and show you it one, one more time, mitering the front. Super easy. I'm gonna put a little dot of glue in there and then I'm gonna fold one side down and I'm gonna pull that other side forward. So hopefully you can see that. And I'm looking at, when I do a mitered binding, I'm looking to match up the seam by the flange. Okay. That's the part that's going to bug me if it doesn't line up. So uh, I just pull it and adjust it until it's right where I want it to be. And then hit it with the iron and it will set in place. And you won't even have to worry about it when you get back around to that corner. That's awesome. <laughs> it's going to be so secure. All right, now it's time to go ahead and add our top stitching. This makes it permanent. The glue makes it very secure, which um, works out great if you need to film something last minute and not actually finish it. <laughs> I won't tell you if we glue or don't glue, but when you want it, when you're ready to give it away, you wanna make sure that that binding's never coming apart. Got it. So we're gonna add a top stitch. Our, our thread color needs to match our flange. Okay. So in this case, I'm gonna use a pink on the top and then the back is just a, a busy 
um, print. So I'm going to leave my neutral cream bobbin in there. Okay. If you have a back, you can, with a different color, you can change and just do different colors, top and bottom. But also I've found in my experience, often the creamy neutral color blends right into the back. Nice. Okay. Almost always. So, uh, I would, I would venture <laughs> a 90% match. Okay. So I'm going to take this, good. I'll just use this little piece of fabric. I'm thinking that one looks good. Okay. So I'm going to re-thread my top. And I like how you did that. It's close, but it does not have to be the most perfect match. No, in your, anytime you're doing binding or quilting, you can see, let me just show this real quick. Super easy. It's not an exact match, but it, it pretty much blends in. Perfect. So, okay. No stress. You don't have to hunt for years to find that exact right color. Sometimes serendipitously you do though, which is great. <laughs> Get that all the way up there. There we go. Making this look harder than it is, but it's not that difficult. All righty. And then again, like when we added our binding to the back, you just pick a middle to start. Okay. It's easier than going all the way, or it's definitely easier than starting in a corner. Yeah. I'll just go, I'll just go right to that. That is the point of it. Okay. So one of the things that I do when I get ready to bind, um, really when I, whenever I get ready to sew, if I don't know exactly where my needle is, I could end up doing something crazy. And so I will put it under and I will bring my needle down and make sure that it's gonna go into the fabric exactly where I want it. In this case, I need to go a little bit to the right. Now, for this project, when you're adding the flange, you wanna stitch in the ditch in between the flange and the binding. Okay. And, um, and hopefully that's just about where you pressed it down so that it comes out in the ditch on the back. The other thing to remember with machine quilting or machine binding is if it doesn't line up exactly with the ditch in the back, it's not a big deal, it's the back. Yeah. It's okay. So stress less. <laughs> Smile more. <laughs> Enjoy. Yeah. So you just go nice and slow in the ditch and your binding is going to be done in no time. All right. So I'm here at the corner. I'm going to go nice and slow and I'm going to stop right in that corner, leave my needle down and pivot. Keep on going. And then you would just keep going all and the way around. That's right. I'm going to continue stitching in the ditch until I get back to where I started and it's going to be all done. And that is the easiest machine binding that I could even imagine. Can you show <laughs> us that little bit at the back you've got? Sure. Yep, so you can see it's not exactly in the ditch in all the places, but I think it looks pretty it's close great. close enough, yeah. Yeah, it's really close. And it just looks so pretty on the front with that mm -hmm. little peak of pink. Yeah, it's almost like you just went, you went an extra step to mm -hmm. make it extra special. And yet it's that much easier because you machine stitched it down. That's right, no hand stitching required. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this episode of The Final Stitch, and I can't wait to hear what new questions you guys come up with. <laughs>